Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. This week, my name weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me to discuss Kumba and Amplat's 2018 financial results. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Sashni. Now, Kumba's results um, highlighted a competent dividend payout, focused on exploration, job creation, job creation, improved safety, and cooperation with Transnet. Yes, so I was impressed with uh, these Anglo-American subsidiaries, both uh, Kumba and Anglo-American Platinum. You know, they put a best foot forward in their, their annual results, and they also showed a strong cognizance towards what we call ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance issues, which are becoming very important, mm-hmm. uh, particularly Kumba. You know, they drew attention to the terrible tragedy in Brazil. I mean, here, yeah, mining's reputation. What mm-hmm. is the world doing about it when, you know, an upstream tailings dam can be allowed to exist in this day and age after killing 19 people three years ago at Sumaco. And then all of a sudden we have now 170 people dead, 140 people still missing, the damage to the environment, terrible social issues. I mean, yeah, they've got a canteen down below from, from the tailings dam, just about all the people killed who were mine workers. I mean, Vale should be hanging its head in absolute shame. You know, we had gave so much attention to dividends nothing to the structure of its tailing dams until the point where a second one has mm-hmm. collapsed with much worse consequences. So it's very important. I think it's a, a massive wake-up call. I see BHP Bulletin, which was involved with the Samarco disaster, is saying, no, it's no good minds trying to police this. The governance should come from a new world body that goes around and checks these dams and sees whether there is a possibility of killing people. I mean, mines can't kill people at this sort of rate. We had it in Wales, you know, a long time ago. We had it at Mary Sprat in South Africa. And also, you know, the conscientiousness of uh, Temba Makunazi to actually try and create three non-mining jobs for Mm -hmm. every one permanent on-site mining job. A lot of attention being given to the 10 challenges that were presented at the mining charter by the president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa. It's important that these issues start coming to the fore because um, I think that we look at what we call ESG, environmental, social and governance issues, they're definitely going to, if you haven't got a good rating, you're going to pay more if you're going to try and uh, you know, raise debt. Equity is going to also be s- questioning you because mm-hmm. I think this is going to come back to, to haunt Vale and it's still haunting BHP Bulletin. Well, we call them B- BHP mm-hmm. now. But we saw that, um, you know, Kumba also was able to give generous dividends. It raised a lot of operational cash. It uh, improved its relationships with Transnet after, you know, the many derailments they had, which actually hurt South Africa. And it's great that they've got that better relationship because you want to earn that foreign exchange because you can see that the quality of the ore coming out of South Africa is top-notch. It's head and shoulders above all the peers, iron ore peers. There's no one that can touch our quality. And what is being done under Temba Makunazi is they, they're increasing that quality all the time. They're making that extra effort. So you you get that uh, 71 and $72 per ton, but that two uh, and one and is, is being added by human element to, to do things correctly and show flexibility, making every effort and then the you know the lump premium we've got um, lumpy ore, and you get a price premium on that, which um, is very good for South Africa. We need that at the moment, and, and therefore you know the state enterprise transnet must snap into action, do the job properly. And moving on to Amplats, um, it has a major strategy for business following excellent results. Yeah, you know they really had superb <laughs> results. I mean, here we thought the price of platinum is so bad. You know, platinum is going to flatten them, <laughs> but it was just the opposite. But what was so impressive is that, you know, they're now emphasizing, look, we are in the business of platinum group metals. It's not just platinum. Because when you saw that rhodium contribution, it was superb. I think it was, well, well over, I think it was 1.5 billion, you know, in revenue from rhodium, which was higher than platinum, of course. Platinum is now coming down to a 40% contribution. It used to be the main contribution. The price is down. 
Also, you know, you had the palladium, which is spoken about so often, making a big contribution, and then even ruthenium, you know, coming up, and osmium starting to pop up. So there is a lot of potential within the platinum group metals, but you can see that Anglo-American platinum still got a lot of faith in platinum. You know, they feel it will start moving, and we notice that the price is starting mm. to move up now because people are realizing there is this deficit, and you can talk as much as you like about electric vehicles. They're going to take a heck of a long time to start making a big impact. You're still going to have to have the law, you know, obeyed through the catalytic converters mm. having... Um, palladium or platinum group metals in and if the palladium price continues to lift like this you know it's going to make a lot of sense to substitute the palladium with platinum once you build these new models mm -hmm. of cars coming through and then there are so many patents that have platinum group metals that you know they should really be focusing on getting smaller little market shares because they've been too dependent on the automotive industry and in that way they can you know make a big contribution to South Africa because we are such big custodians and hosts of platinum group metals. And still with Amplats they went to establish a solar power plant in Zimbabwe. Yeah it was uh, very interesting to to hear that uh, they will uh, consider a hundred megawatt solar power plant but that Eskim has a tether on this <laughs> and it won't allow them to go beyond 10 megawatts. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that is, that's ridiculous. You know, if uh, people have a business case for going 10 times that, I don't see any reason why Eskim, which has been complaining like mad about, you know, having to pay too much for, for the renewable energies, sort of standing in the way. I'm sure they won't be able to do it for, for very long because what happens with this is that, you know, Anglo American Platinum itself doesn't have to invest in this. Third party interests come in and say, we will build this 100 megawatt solar power plant for you. We will give you this environmental additional benefit. And, you know, we can see environmental ESG. It's coming up big. And it's, it's big internationally mm -hmm. at the moment. And, you know, like the massive article in the Financial Times of London last week saying this is a factor in our investment. So if they can say we'll come in, we will invest in this, we will put the you know, the E into the ESG here at no cost to you. And, and you can have reliable power now on site coming from the sun. We'll have all sorts of battery storage, whatever else you need to make sure that you get the, the 100 megawatts mm -hmm. that you need. No skin off your nose. We do everything. We put up the infrastructure. And all we want from you is a guarantee that you'll buy this from us you know, over a long period of time. And it's become a business case because it's cheaper than, mm. than Eskim. So we can see a lot of companies are looking at this because, you know, why not? <laughs> You're getting this offer you can't refuse at a time when Eskim is unreliable. Yeah. Well, thanks for speaking with us. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries.